have uh, made a, a sort of composite of both of those, which is a danger if you decided that uh, JPK was doing a lot of editorial uh, additions. But anyway, that's what they have done. So they they uh, put in both JPK's Boeing's and Anna Magdalene Fox Boeing's. And in a case where there's a where there's a difference, like in uh, measure, these are the measure numbers over here. So in measure 20, the first beat, this uh, one, two, three, four, five, fifth line up, the first beat, it looks like a, the A and B copy has uh, has indicated three notes to be the Boeing, and the JPK copy has indicated more closely the last three notes. She she indicated the first three notes. He indicated the last three notes of that uh, 16th note pattern. And uh, they have decided to go with JPK, and they do that a lot. Occasionally, they average the two. Let's see if there's an example of that. I don't see one right. I don't see one right off, but. Where the uh, the A and B copy might be shifted a little bit to the right, and the JPK copy might be shifted a little way the other direction, and they decide that perhaps these two uh, copies were looking at the same autograph, and they both made a mistake just a little bit off in opposite directions. So they average the two and they come up with something in the middle. Let's see one of those right. Quickly. So let's see if this is a. Use this as sort of a reference to take a look at some of the things that you might that you might end up uh, getting a hold of if you wanted to play these sweeps. This is what Bill Kolmierski has come up with, and I'll just show you this briefly to show, show you what sort of the way cellists think, if, I'll, if I can presume to have any idea. Now, the interesting thing about this Bill Kolmierski edition is that he took some research from a Soviet cellist named Stogorsky, who, who uh, compared box own autograph with his wife's autograph, and he's decided that this is not Anna Magdalene and Box handwriting. It is actually Box handwriting. This Soviet cellist, Stogorsky, and so he has printed an edition which I don't have a hold of, which prints all the errors and all the uh, inconsistencies and in Boeing's, just as as they're an exact printed reading of that, which would sound real strange if you listen to. Uh, even Casals or uh, Starker or anybody play the cello suites, they all correct these mistakes, or they read editions that correct these mistakes. So if you were to uh, get a hold of Stogorsky's edition, it would sound a little strange. Vilko Mirsky has also, uh, that, that must be some sort of minority group that has decided that, that this is Bach's autograph. And uh, Vilko Mirsky is one. He, and so he's printed the autograph right next to, the, uh, to his edition. And, just like this is what the book looks like for every every page of every dance movement. And the the interesting and when I first looked at this like ten years ago, I bought this book. I thought, well, he's not doing he's not doing the same Boeing's as are on an animatically a Bach copy. But actually, what a cellist has decided he needs to do is he needs to join the Boeing's together so that his bow goes da 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 da. instruction to a cellist as to what to do with this bow. And it's just simply, you alternate the bow. Um, single notes is one bow, or those, or that, uh, that slur mark is those four notes on a bow, those three notes on a bow. So it's pretty clear instructions. And so that's why his uh, edition looks different than the A and B ed copy, is that those sort of shortened bowings that she has there, he's just 
try to decide, you know, what she really meant and has elongated them. So that they all join together. So the cellist bow never stops. Now, just to briefly show you, uh, discuss this question about whether it's, it is her copy or it is Bach's autograph. Here's a Bach autograph of the violin uh, sonatas and partitas. We have his original autograph of those. And you can look for yourself. It's, her handwriting is very close. It looks like she has not only copied his music, but she, she has copied his uh, style of handwriting and his style of making the 16th note flags curve and probably, you know, like a, like a good uh, pen and ink artist has tried to make an almost photographic copy of what he's done. Which, if you decide that that is true, then we should trust her bones more than a lot of people do. So one important thing to, to remember when you're looking at the, at the uh, copies is that those are uh, bowing indications. And if a trombone player played that, the way brass players play, it would sound so like Thank you. 
And actually, cellists used to play these like exercises. Casal calls it a German style. Okay, so. Another trombone edition that a trombonist is likely to get a hold of is by uh, Robert Marsteller of University of Southern California, a trombone teacher down there. And the only other trombone edition that I know of came out of the Paris Conservatory, and they do a lot of uh, transposing so that it fits a tenor trombone without enough attachment to transpose the pieces up higher. Um, let's see, let me get that it's back on here. Now this is again, on the right side, the edition that I play from with my uh, a and B copy in red and my JPK copy in blue. So Marsteller claims that he took a look at, I don't know if I can find this real quick. He claims in his edition that he took a look at the Baca Cell Shop. Introduction to his second volume. He says that his, uh, his edition follows the Baca Cell Shop edition. Well, whether they're Boeings or slurrings, it does they don't, these don't look similar to me at all. And he's done an interesting thing with uh, kind of reverse dynamics. Like uh, in the fir very first measure, as those 16th notes descend, he's made the, dyna the dynamic indication get louder. And this uh, goes opposite of most of the research I've done that indicates that it, uh, in box time, the dynamics were not indicated. And in general, they needed to follow the contour of the line. In other words, as a as the melodic line went up, the dynamic would get louder. As it went down, the dynamic would get softer. So he actually reverses some of these dynamics. And we'd get a, we'd get a very different reading if we played his edition. Okay, now a couple of uh, 
interesting sort of study editions. I need to thank uh, Bo Stewart and Toby Sachs for lending me some of these editions. I got this one from Professor Sachs. This is a uh, Tortellier, and it's not really a uh, performing edition. It's more like you, you go to this to figure out some of the phrasing problems that you're faced with. And his, uh, just real briefly, his hieroglyphics here are the, uh, the indication above the very first measure is that that is the beginning of a phrase, and above the uh, first measure in the second line, that's the end of that phrase. And this little railroad track thing is a bridge between phrases. And then his second measure, second line, is the beginning of a new phrase. This indication here, the beginning of measure 13, is where one phrase ends and another phrase begins on a common note. In other words, this is the, the last note of that phrase, and it's the first note of this phrase. And then this other indication is that this note is the last note of that phrase. This note is the first note of that phrase. And this is to indicate that you should not uh, stop the bow in between. There should be a, a, um, a fluid sound through, even though it's a, a new phrase. There shouldn't be any kind of break. The only other indication on this particular one is these little scoop indications over some notes. And he says that's an expressive note. So those notes need to be sort of brought out of the texture, or at least. Uh, and there's a danger in that. If you try to interpret that stuff literally, you're going to over-exaggerate it. So more like if you just think of that being as a, a, an expressive note, it's probably going to come out as much as it needs to be. I found this somewhat useful in deciding where to breathe, especially where to take the big breaths as a trombone player uh, and where the phrases are. But even more useful is another edition, which is in our library by Duran Alexanian. This is very old, actually. It's 1929. And uh, so this man was way ahead of his time. 1929, Casals recorded his uh, record of the cello suites in uh, 19, 1936, around that time. So this Alexanian has uh, even come out with this before that. His, uh, I'll just play a little bit at the end of it. His indications are quite a bit more complex, and unfortunately, the explanation of it is uh, a poor translation of French. So I need to find a French-speaking person in order to really decipher this. But I'm very interested in this edition in uh, preparing for this uh, fourth sweep during spring quarter. And it's, uh, it's so extensive that I don't really have time to talk about it right now, but I, I hope to make it into a whole uh, topic on my oral exam. Just real briefly, this, he's uh, trying to indicate contrapuntal, or the, the polyphonic nature of the suites, and he's trying to indicate a two-part texture here, with these down stems being one voice, and these up stems being another voice. And so, if I'll, I'll just play this last, uh, from that measure for about three measures. If I play just the lower voice, sounds like this.
kind of like a magician. Okay, I just wanted to sort of segue into uh, into a brief discussion of of how I uh, actually interpret that that printed page in the trombone music. And I'll use the four suite for that, but I have a recording of uh, Casals, probably one of the earliest and most important uh, interpreters of box music of, this, of these cello suites. I have a recording of him doing a master class and it kind of gives, it sums up his thoughts and feelings of this music and uh, it's been some of my inspiration. This particular recording has been, I've listened to a hundred times and it's been some inspiration to me. One uh, curious thing about uh, Casals is that he is going to uh, play some wrong notes that I don't, they don't come from any editions that I've ever seen and uh, he must be doing them on purpose but it's really hard to tell where they come from. For example in bar 10, see I got one that doesn't have uh, bar numbers on it. Um, one, two, three, four, five. It's impossible to look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll just play the first few lines of this. But in uh, in measure ten, the second beat, and if you look at the, it's the third line, right in the center. There is a uh, a or a C A E G on the second beat C A E G. For some reason, uh, Casals is going to play C B flat A G F like a scale. He's going to smooth that out. The uh, J P K copy has it even a different reading here. It's C A F G C A F G. Da 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 da.